Welcome to or welcome back to the 510 Report, where we talk about industry news, advocacy, and general goings on. For those curious, no, I'm not going to be addressing the things I said about Kavanaugh in my last vlog. That particular topic will be getting addressed this Thursday. And the first little bit of news that I wanted to talk about today falls under the general goings on category. About a week ago, our very own Zofi Vapes had a very interesting run in with a fan. She posted this picture on her Instagram with the caption, a drunk ass asshole hugged me by but then picked me up. I hate it when people do that shit, so I yelled no. But it was too late. He fell on top of me, fracturing my arm. He fled before the police showed up. It hurts hella more than it did that night. The police officers on the scene were really cool dudes. She posted another picture on her Instagram a few days later of her arm, horribly, horribly bruised, talking about how she might need surgery. And I don't know what the circumstances were surrounding this fan saying goodbye to her. I don't know if this was at an event or any sort of meetup or something something like that, or if this was just something that happened in public, like in her day-to-day -day life. Now, I've had plenty of real interesting interactions with fans sometimes, but I've never had someone pick me up and then fall on me and then break my arm and then run away. And then just a few days ago on her Instagram, she posted this that said, I think I need help. Wonder if anyone in the Atlanta area would want some part-time work? Must vape. And the caption said, injured and can't film vape reviews. In case you missed it, an asshole fell on me and fractured my arm and then ran before the police showed up. I fucking hate it when people try to pick me up. I yelled no, but it was too late. I was on the ground in a split second. While I was screaming and bleeding, someone called the police, and the last thing anyone saw before they showed up was this guy getting out of their fast AF. I love hugging people goodbye, but why the fuck do some people think it's okay to pick another person up? The worst part is that I get to read the comments about how I'm wrong for thinking I'm the victim. After all, I had been drinking, so therefore other people can just lift my body off the ground and relieve me of any control I have over over my balance. And that's kind of where this story ends. Zofie Vapes still has a fractured arm as far as I know. They never discovered who was the person that lifted her up, fell on her, and broke her arm. It sounds like Zofie Vapes does need some help, so if you're in the Atlanta area and you're looking for a part-time job, I'm sure you could hit her up. And of course, all the best wishes to Zofie Vapes on a speedy recovery, and congratulations on 300,000 subscribers, Zofie. That's awesome. And the next thing I wanted to talk about today involves Jewel. There have been a lot of news reports coming out about Juul and a lot of headlines are saying things like raided, the FDA raided Juul Labs or the FDA seized documents from Juul Labs. In headlines, they like to use words like raid and seize to make this seem much more scary than it is. It kind of makes it seem like the FDA just surprised Juul Labs and just showed up one day and kicked down the door and demanded a bunch of documents. When in reality, what happened is the FDA had requested these certain documents from Juul, and Juul was more than willing to provide these documents. These documents were requested by the FDA back in April, and Juul complied. And in addition to these documents, the FDA also inspected the company's manufacturing facilities to make sure that they were being compliant with the agency standards. And of course, the reason why the FDA wanted all these documents from Juul Labs is the FDA is still confused as to why young people are interested in devices like these, and they're hoping to try to sort of gain some sort of understanding from these documents from Juul. And in regards to these documents, the FTA likes to make a real big, like, puff up your chest sounding statements. We are committed to taking all necessary actions, such as inspections and advancing new policies to prevent a new generation of kids from becoming addicted to tobacco products. Keeping in mind that there is no actual tobacco in vapor products, and also keeping in mind that all of this, all of these documents that they've been getting from Jewel Labs, it's all because of the epidemic word that Scott Gottlieb used early last month. And Juul CEO Kevin Burns also had a similar statement. We are committed to preventing underage use and we want to engage with FDA, lawmakers, public health advocates, and others to keep Juul out of the hands of young people. So when you're reading sensationalist headlines about these raids and seizing documents from Juul, just remember that this is a normal part of the process. These were documents that were requested by the FDA back in April and Juul Labs happily 
fully complied. There was no SWAT team of FDA agents kicking down the door of Jewel Labs and seizing documents. And that's kind of where this story ends. The FDA hasn't said anything about the documents, uh, shared any sort of information that they've got to the documents as it relates to how to keep jewels out of the hands of young people. And I'm actually formulating in my head why I think that teenagers and young people are attracted to the jewel. I don't really have all of my thoughts formulated quite just yet, but it's something I hope to be sharing in the future. And I might sound like a broken record, but I just want to remind everybody the reason that the FDA needs all of these records from Jewel Labs is because of that epidemic word that Scott Godlib threw out about two months ago. They have still not produced any data or evidence to back up this epidemic claim. And I think we need to hold them accountable for that. We need to see this data. We need to see this evidence. We can't just take the word epidemic for face value without seeing any studies behind it or any evidence behind it. I don't want this to be a thing that just after time becomes an established thing. The epidemic must be real because we've been talking about it for so long. The epidemic is only real if you have the data and the evidence to back it up. And I think we should all be constantly asking the FDA and Scott Godlib to provide that evidence. I feel like in this situation, it's the least they could do. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about today is is a fantastic video, fantastic report from CBS Sunday Morning. What I'm gonna be doing is linking down in the description to this CBS Sunday Morning news article. I love this news report so much that I just want everybody, everybody, everybody to share it as much as they possibly can. CBS Sunday Morning had actually approached me towards the beginning of August to be a part of this. The only reason it didn't happen was due to a scheduling conflict, but they had first approached me and I was very, very skeptical the producers that I talked to back in August, they put my fears to rest. They assured me, they said, no, this is not going to be some sort of like calculated hit piece against vaping. And I was overjoyed to see that when the CBS Sunday Morning Report came out, it was not a calculated hit piece against vaping. It's actually pretty fair and balanced. And you could even argue that it is a pro vaping news segment. Like I said, I'll have a link to it down below, but CBS called it clearing the air, controversy and cautious hope over vaping. So obviously this whole CBS news report is gonna be a little bit too long long to share, but I did want to go over a few of the things that I found pretty interesting out of it. And again, I would encourage everybody to watch the full news report and share it as many places as you can. But the news report starts off where they're talking to a girl named Nicole Crumley. She grew up in the South. She started smoking cigarettes in middle school, much, very much like myself. She was a smoker for the next 20 years, tried all of the traditional methods of quitting gum, patch, lozenges, nothing worked. Finally, when she picked up vaping, vapor products worked to help get away from cigarettes, which is a very similar story that a lot of vapors share. And because of the impact that e-cigarettes and vapor products have had on Nicole Crumley's life, she's part of the Tennessee Smoke Free Association now, which was started, I believe, by our very own vape and Greek, Demetrius Agrafiotis of Smoke Free Radio and The Smokers Show. And the report talks about how even earlier this year, the American Cancer Society went on record and said that e-cigarettes were markedly less harmful than tobacco cigarettes. They also interview Scott Gottlieb in this news piece. And it's always interesting because you never quite know which Scott Gottlieb you're going to get. You don't know whether you're ever going to get like scientist Scott Gottlieb or politician Scott Gottlieb. Because depending on who he is talking to, he will either mention the epidemic of youth vaping a lot, or he'll actually stand on the side of science and say things like, the hope is that you can wean smokers off tobacco altogether and off of nicotine altogether. But for a component of smokers, if we can mitigate them to less harmful products, non-combustible products, the presumption is that you're going to be reducing risk in the adult population. CBS also asked him about nicotine. They said, so to be clear, here, nicotine does not cause cancer. And luckily we got scientific Scott Gottlieb because he replied, nicotine's not, it's all the components of combustion. Nicotine's not a completely benign compound. It has side effects, but the cause of cancer and the carcinogens in tobacco are the products of combustion. So it sounds like Scott Gottlieb has finally come around to what we've really all been thinking for the last few years anyway. It's not the nicotine that kills you, it's the smoke 
it's the combustion. And when CBS asked Scott Gottlieb about balancing the interests of adult smokers or the risks associated with teen use, he said, well, this is the challenge that we have. You're hooking a young generation of people on nicotine, and some of those youth will become long-term users of nicotine and maybe long-term users of e-cigarettes. And what I think is most interesting about the last answer that Scott Gottlieb gave is he said that the youths might become long-term users of e-cigarettes products as opposed to the standard political form answer of these will lead kids into regular smoking habits it seems like a lot of these health officials and people like Scott Godlip and the FDA are kind of abandoning the whole these are a gateway into smoking argument which is probably for their own good because we do have data from the CDC that shows that e-cigarettes are not a gateway to traditional smoking. Just think it's really interesting how he kind of just abandoned that whole argument, kind of just swept it under the rug and now says that, oh, the youths will become long-term users of e-cigarettes. E-cigarettes that are 95% less harmful for you. They also interviewed Ashley Gould, the executive director for Juul, who reiterated Juul's stance on youth prevention and how serious they are about keeping these products out of the hands of kids. They also interviewed Mila Cohen, who is the president of San Francisco board of supervisors who initiated and campaigned for the banning of flavored tobacco and vapor products in the city of San Francisco. She kind of laughed a little bit at the adults love flavors to hashtag. And one thing she said that was really bizarre to me. And you know what? What brings me to the table is less concern for adults, but really focusing on children. Less concern for adults. Less concern for the adults that may be voting for for you, less concern for the 480,000 people that are gonna die this year from tobacco-related diseases and illnesses, less concern for the adults that are actually in dire need of these less harmful alternatives. If there's one thing that I really dislike, it is the protecting the kids argument. It is nothing more than an appeal to emotion. It is nothing more than a logical fallacy. And it is literally the last leg that any of the anti-vaping groups or politicians or health committee groups have to stand on. And Mila Cohen's biggest concern is that tobacco companies and vapor product companies are sort of doctoring their results. She believes the data is being falsified and said, if the FDA is going to really be studying this, I want independent, peer, empirical research and data to drive this policy conversation. Well, you are in luck, Mila Cohen, because we have mountains and mountains of evidence, mountains and mountains of independent, peer-reviewed, empirical studies on vapor products. We've got short-term studies, we've got long-term studies, we've got the Royal College of Physicians report on tobacco harm reduction. We already have the data to drive this policy conversation, Mila Cohen. And it honestly just breaks my heart seeing Mila Cohen be so against vapor products when her own grandparents died of smoking-related illnesses. We are on the same team, Mila Cohen. Vapors and vapor advocates also do not want any parents or grandparents to die because of smoking-related illnesses. But unfortunately, misguided or misinformed politicians like Mila Cohen are kind of standing in the way of that. They also go visit like Mountain I said, Oak this is a long news where they talk to the and mayors, I'm not going to be able to cover everything in here, so vapors, I would really, and they kind of really show that the majority of this, this vapor industry is local shops, mom and pop owned local stores, and small time liquid manufacturers. I really think the vape industry was represented pretty well in this piece by CBS. And the last really interesting interview they did was with the CEO of Philip Morris. His name is Andre. His last name I cannot pronounce. And this is something we've talked about in the past as well, but he told CBS he envisions a time when Philip Morris isn't even manufacturing cigarettes anymore. His actual quote was, yes, that will be the future, and the faster, the better. Last year, Philip Morris manufactured some 800 billion cigarettes. And I think for the CEO of Philip Morris to say he envisions a time, hopefully in the very near future, where they don't have to manufacture cigarettes, 
I think that's a huge deal. I think that alone really shows the power of vaping and how intrusive vaping has been on societal norms. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. So less harmful e-cigarettes and vapor products are converting smokers hand over fist away from cigarettes. There are now more than 5 million ex-smokers who now use vapor products in the UK. According to the CDC, there's an estimated 9 million vapors in the United United States that are ex-smokers that now use vapor products. We have mountains of evidence and mountains of science in favor of vapor products being a less harmful alternative. We have scientific groups and doctors coming out of the woodwork to support vapor products. In the UK, they're telling smokers to switch to vapor products right now without hesitation. And we have the CEO of Philip Morris saying he envisions a time in the not too distant future where they completely stop manufacturing tobacco cigarettes. We even have the American Cancer Society saying things like vapor products are markedly less harmful for you. All of these things that I mentioned seem like very, very positive things, yet vapor products and e-cigs continue to get demonized and vilified by the FDA, by the California Department of Public Health, by the Truth Initiative, by the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids. I have said this before, and I will say it again, I do believe that science will prevail in the vaping industry. And I genuinely, genuinely cannot wait for the day that the FDA and Scott Gottlieb and the Truth Initiative and the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids and Mila Cohen in San Francisco all have to face that reality. The reality that they may have been wrong this entire time. So that right there is where we're gonna end this 510 report. As always, I wanna remind everybody, join CASA. Go to CASA.org, it's free and easy to sign up. All you need is an email. If you're ever wondering about vape legislation, possible bad vape legislation happening in your particular area, city, state, CASA is the ones who will inform you about that, but you gotta join up. Just go, CASA.org, link is in the description. And as Kevin Skipper always said, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Let's get involved. <laughs> <laughs>